Welcome to another sneak peek Saturday at the Alameda Free Library. My name is Jenny and today we are going to read some nonfiction. Um, it is called She Memes Well by uh, Quinta Bronson. So um, yep, you can find this in the news section. This is the call number if you want to place a hold on it. You're welcome to do that. Um, and as always, I'm going to start reading the inside um, of the flap here, and then we're going to get started with the first chapter. Quinter Brunson is a master of breaking the internet. Before having any traditional background in media, her humorous videos were the first to go viral on Instagram's platform. From there, Brunson's wryly observant point of view helped cement her status in the comedy world at large. With roles on HBO, Netflix, ABC, Adult Swim, BuzzFeed, The CW, and Comedy Central, now Brunson is bringing her comedic chops to the page in She Memes Well, an earnest laugh-out-loud collection about this unusual road to notoriety. In her debut essay collection, Quinter applies her trademark humor and heart to discuss what it was like to go from a girl who loved the World Wide Web to a girl whose face launched a thousand memes. With anecdotes that range from the ridiculous, like the time she and her high school girlfriends decided they needed to get into a street fight, to heartfelt material, about her struggles with depression. Quinta's voice is entirely authentic and eminently readable. With its intimate tone and hilarious moments, she memes well, will make you feel as if you are sitting down with your chillest, funniest friend. <clears throat> All righty. Hey reader, being someone that people recognize from the internet is quite the experience. The first time I was memed, stranger, I was memed strangers all over the world saw me making this face. I'm gonna show you right now. It's a face of a girl whose jaw hit the floor upon hearing that her date paid her date paid for both movie tickets. A girl who could not believe she was just treated to a large popcorn from the con concession stand. A girl who was not used to the finer things in her life. A girl who was a character made up and played by me. Was this how I expected to first get noticed as an entertainer? No. Was it hilarious? Yes, very much so. Not only was the video funny, but I still laugh at the fact that the role that pushed me into f fame was a character that became known as a he got money girl. When I shot that video, I had no idea I'd be, it would be my start in the industry. I was just fooling around with a camera phone, um, hoping I could get some of my Instagram followers to laugh. But even though I didn't have a solid plan, for how to launch my career. I knew I wasn't just going to be the girl who's never been on a nice date. I had so much more to prove to the world. I've always liked making people laugh. I think it was because comedy was a thing that connected me to my four much older siblings. That's right, my parents were active. <laughs> Together they produced Khaled, Nija, Kiana, Quay and me, the appropriately named Quinta, which means fifth in Spanish. <laughs> Being the youngest and the smallest of the Brunson crew, I learned the importance of attention and how to get it quickly, quickly, early in, on in life. Perhaps that's why I fell in love with the internet the first time I had, I laid eyes on it. Here was a place with endless opportunities to not grab only attention, but grab it on a global level. What's not to love? Turns out, oh, so much, but we'll get to that and more, including but not limited to my thoughts on Philly models, boys, protests, Apple and black education. 
Welcome to my head, reader. The truth is, it's intimidating to go from the rapid fire humor of the internet to pouring all of my thoughts onto physical paper. This shit is scary. It feels weightier, more significant, more permanent. I can't just delete a book like I can with a tweet that doesn't land. But still, I wanted to write this because I have a lot to say and a lot that I wanted to share. I'm hoping that my words bring you some of the happy happiness that I'm always trying to put into my work. Now just, just in a have it on your shelf forever kind of format. Although I'm relatively new to the game, I came up during a crazy period in media and technology. There's been a lot of evolution packed onto into my career as an entertainer. Creating stuff for the internet forced me to become my own writer. Producer, director, actor, editor, you name it. All of this helped me make the seemingly impossible leap from messing around on the internet to getting paid to mess around on the internet to working in the traditional entertainment media space and still messing around on the internet. Watching the stuff I've posted over the years evolve as more people share it with their own jokes and comments has been an incredibly joyful experience. People online, strangers, um, really, um, help me multiply, expand and become coded into the DNA of the internet. All this has taught me how to embrace the unknown let go of full control and finally open up to sharing more of myself with the world. After all, I believe recording our lives is recording history. I owe a lot of my evolution to the people who have followed me since the early days of my internet -ing. <laughs> Back when I was uploading weird videos of me unenthusiastically singing the theme song to Space Jam and whatnot, through your likes, comments, and shares, I've grown more confident in my words, stories, and experiences. I've learned that I do have something to say beyond a caption's length. You're the ones who shifted my perspective in a major way and motivated me to take up little more space in the creative world. Thank you for that. In return, I'd like to utilize my experiences to teach you some of the valuable lessons I've learned as a meme, as a woman, as a black person, as a shorty, as a performer, as a Will Ferrell lover, as a whatever other label I've been given over the years. The most important takeaway I hope this book will give you is how to embrace the act of evolution. Memes would not exist without their ability to morph and carry new meanings as they pass from person to person and neither would I. Speaking of evolution, I'm a completely different person than when I first sat down to write to you. When I started working on this book, I was just leaving a stable job of four years. I peeled off my security blanket, BuzzFeed, and was naked in the dawn of change. This is both a metaphorical and literal an analogy. I actually do sleep naked. People say, but Quinta, what if there's a fire and I'm just like, the streets will be blessed to see my gifts. I had no clue what the future would hold for me, but I was excited to push myself even further and see what resulted. Since then, I've moved in with my boyfriend, who then became a fiance, got a cat, uh, transitioned from my 20s into my 30s, earned some money and then spent too much of that money. <clears throat> deleted Twitter from my phone, redownloaded it, and then got rid of it again, lost friends to demons and gained followers through jokes, went to Costa Rica, celebrated my parents' 40th weddings, wedding anniversary, got angry, got sad, got excited, and got motivated, successfully gave myself passion twists, uploaded, downloaded, crapped, and deleted. I sold a few shows and got a serious... Um, a series regular job on HBO's A Black Lady Sketch Show. It's been a whirlwind and I'm excited to share all of these experiences and more with you. So, looks like we're going to be hanging out together for a bit and since you're about to invite me into your life, let me invite you into mine. I'm currently sitting on my crate and barrel couch with my computer resting on my lap. 
There's a lone Nike sneaker in the middle of my living room floor and my orange tabby cat, Jack, is eyeing me like I owe him rent. The sun is shining through my living room window because here in LA, the sun is always doing shit like shining through windows. My jaw hurts for no specific reason and I can't wait to play Mario Party. But first, this. Let's get into it. V is for victory. I got a taste for the stage at the ripe age of five, dancing in one of those little kid recitals nobody wants to go to. As soon as the theater began cheering and clapping for me, and sure for the other kids who were dancing up there with me too, I knew I liked that feeling and would be chasing it forever. To say I was an energetic kid would be an understatement. My mother, who is a dedicated and brilliant kindergarten teacher, always believed in solving problems with education. Seeing that I needed an outlet for my hyperactive tendencies, she signed me up for acrobatics and ballet as a way to get all of my restlessness energy out. It was a genius move. If you have a child who is literally spinning circles around you all day, flipping and knocking over the vase you just bought from Kmart, sign her up for dance class so at least those circles can look <laughs> more like pirouettes. When I first got to L&L &L Dance Productions, a modest three-floor row home turned dance studio, I immediately fell in love. First of all, the building itself was cool. The two studio spaces on the first floor had floor-to-ceiling mirrors up front with a ballet beret attached to the back wall. The second floor was one big studio space with a locker room and another room for changing. The third floor served as creepy storage space you ventured to when you got older to be rebellious because no, no one was allowed up there. The lobby was filled with little girls who were giggling, gossiping and jumping while waiting for their class to start. There were three women who ran the desk, affectionately known as Aunt Lien, Aunt Linda and Aunt Stacy. They somehow always seemed totally fine with all the wild energy. On my first day, the main thing I noticed was that I was the smallest one in my class. Seeing myself next to all the other girls my age, I was immediate, immediately like, I know I was the shortest one in kindergarten, but dang, you're taller than me too. Before this, I didn't realize that I'd have the reaction every time I entered a group setting for the rest of my life. Consistently being the smallest person in the room does either one of two things. It can help you be noticed or it can help you be ignored. To be straight with you, when I was a little girl, my height made people fawn over me a lot. I was fucking cute. I looked like a little bubblehead baby doll. When it came to dance though, the teachers were smarter than to let themselves be charmed by my adorable, adorableness. They had been there and seemed cute. The question was, could I perform? It was the exact challenge I needed. The teachers were my favorite part of dance. They were all so cool and stern, so you had to work hard to impress them. You had to get good at your craft, you had to pay attention, hit your marks and be technically proficient. When they said positions, you got in those positions or else you delayed the whole class. When they said point your foot, you pointed your foot or else your perfect arabesque was worthless. They demanded excellence. Two teachers stood out to me from my time at L&L. &L. The first was Miss Harley. Miss Harley, who couldn't, could have been anywhere from 22 to 47, my age radar hadn't developed yet, was the coolest person to me. She was a dancer for Philadenko, one of the best companies in America. At a quick glance, she looked like my sister Kiana pretty and so forth, and I liked that about her immediately. Most importantly, she once threw ballet shoes at the wall when a girl in the class wasn't paying attention. That was badass and earned my six-year-old respect. 
Miss Holly had a warm presence until the classroom door shut and it was time to learn routines. Obviously, our early moves weren't, so, weren't too complicated because we were tiny kid idiots. But like I said, there was still an expectation of excellence. Being held to such a high standard, we were made to feel like we were real dancers, even though we were basically playing a drawn out game of Simon Says. Early on in the lessons, Miss Holly told us that something exciting was upcoming. Okay, ladies, we're going to start practicing a routine for the recital, she informed us, exci extending the pronunciation of the word recital. That's how you know something is important when someone really takes their time to enunciate the word. She said we'd be performing on stage, doing both ballet and acro acrobatics routines in front of our parents and friends. While most of the class was practicing a move I like to call picking a leotard veggie out of the butt, I perked up. Recital? It sounded like something I'd be into, especially after the way Miss Holly set it up. Doing routines in on a stage with the lights on us and our families in the audience sounded so glamorous and special. You're going to need a, you're going to need to work extra hard to show your families how much you've learned, Miss Holly told us. So let me, I nodded. Um, a chance to show off in front of everyone. I was going to take this seriously. The next time, Miss Holly yelled, get in positions. I sprinted to my spot like my life depended on it. Having four older siblings in the house, I was rarely granted the opportunity to lead things. So in dance class, I took advantage of every chance that I got to run shit. We are our best and plead and <clears throat> being sure to point our feet perfectly to the classical music. I pointed as hard as I could in order to seem better than I was. Ballet is all about presenting perfection, even when you're in pain. That's, that pressure for perfection may have motivated me, but at the same time, it was good to have an outlet in my other L&L &L class, acrobatics. Acrobatics was really where my chaotic talents would shine. I loved tumbling and flipping and wanted to learn all that I could about how to defy gravity. My acrobatics teacher, Miss Denise, was cool and I immediately liked her. She was short like me and a bit less rigid than Miss Harley. Rigid in that we were still doing flip flop, uh, flips and tricks that could literally break our necks, so you had to pay attention, but the mood of the class was fun. In ballet, we were firmly bouncing to Bach to prepare for the recital, while in acrobatics, there was a more laid back kind of vibe as we called wheeled in prep for our big routine. Okay, girls, Miss Denise hollered one day as we prepped. Now we're gonna put this all to music. You ready? She popped a CD into the boom box and hit play. Everybody get up, it's time to slam now. Lena Lafleur's voice rang. We've got the real jam going on. Welcome to the Space Jam. Yes, that's right. We were going to dancing to the Quad City DJ's breakout hit from the Michael Jordan Bugs Bunny vehicle <laughs> Space Jam, AKA one of the greatest basketball stories ever told. The movie had just come out and was all the rage in animation, music, and all around hilarity. First graders like me gave it five stars. My personal favorite line, let's all laugh at the duck. The delivery from Daffy, from Daffy takes me out. What a comic genius. Anyway, going a young Quinta was ecstatic that we'd be performing to this song and so was everyone else in the class. Have you ever seen a group of five and six year old aspiring ballerinas go hammer to bass music? It's magnificent. <laughs> As soon as the beat dropped, everyone started doing roundoffs and back handsprings, creating absolute chaos in the classroom. The CD would skip and Miss Denise would holler at us to get back to positions until that chaos became more coordinated. This play 
past grown process repeated itself for the next months or so as we learned our routines for the recital. Little by little, Miss Harley and Miss Denise drilled the moves into our developing brains. As the summer recital approached, Miss Harley and Miss Denise started to page through the costume catalogs that were released every year from companies like Costume Gallery, Dance Go, and Bloch. Um, the magazines would be filled with frilly, fun, and glitzy outfits that could add some necessary dramatic effect to whatever song you were dancing to. Us kids would crowd around trying to look over their shoulders and see what cute customs we might be getting. I always tried to give my input, but they left me out of the important decision making. <laughs> the day our costumes arrived, Miss Holly and Miss Denise skipped warm ups for the day, combined their glasses, and had all the girls try on their symbols instead. We were giddy and coming down of our sugar highs from lunch. I was so excited I couldn't stop hopping up and down. Miss Harley helped me in my ballet costume, a bluish leotard with sequins and a sheer skirt that made me feel like a fairy. I twirled and looked into the mirror, but the best was yet to come, my acrobatics costume, a cheerleader ensemble to match the Space Jam theme. <laughs> the leotard was bright white with a satiny shine to it, with sleeves down to my wrist and gold sequin bands sewn on around the edges. It also had had a turtle, <laughs> a turtleneck, you know, because nothing says breathable dancewear like long sleeves, gold handcuffs, and a turtleneck. <laughs> the jazziness was highlighted by red sequin stripes down the skirt and a gold sequin belt. With new matching white acrobatic shoes, the look was complete. I felt like a Christmas ornament and looked like a disco ball. <laughs> All right. I think this is where I'm gonna stop, but I'm gonna show you this very, very cute picture of her here in in her dance outfit. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think this is really charming. I think this is really funny. Um, and again, if you want to um, check it out, it's on our new shelf in the non-fiction section. It is called She Memes Well by Quinta uh brunson um place a hold on it if you like so you can make sure that it's still available when you come in um as always i hope you enjoyed this and i see you again in two weeks bye <laughs>